Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. Of course, the news is, you know, the icon, LKJ, Latif Kayode, Jack Hondi. Uh, he passed on yesterday at 91, you know, um, first civilian governor of Lagos State. I guess that's the way they see it. But a man of many parts and um, uh, uh, a veteran uh, politician. Everybody in the land, from the president, you know, to former presidents, governors, the Aula family, Atheni Ferry, Tinumbu, uh, anybody you can think of have been paying uh, tributes. And indeed, uh, that shall be the theme of our program this morning. And in that connection, we have Professor Tunde Samuel with us. Professor Samuel is Pro-Chancellor of Federal University Otuake in Bayelsa, as well as our APC uh, chieftain. Thank you very much for coming on, Prof. Thanks for having me. Indeed, my pleasure. But first of all, our Adidon Jasalam uh, is actually at the burial site. Um, the event is uh, this morning. Let's cut over to Adidon Jasalam, Adini, and um, see where we are. Good morning, Adidon Okay. Hello, Yari. Yeah. Good morning. Okay. Great, great, great that we have you there. Um, so tell us what, what stage we're at now. Um, we, we saw some photos you sent in. You started from his house in Ilupeju. Um, so where are we now? Yes, I'm at the Ilupeju house of the former governor of Lagos State, the very first civilian governor of Lagos State, who died in his sleep yesterday, Thursday. And then um, behind me is his remains over there, and um, the family just organized a special prayer uh, for him. And of course, it is still lying in state. Presently, people are supposed to line up now, uh, go around the, uh, the remains, and also offer prayers. That is the state that we are. Clerics were here this morning, and then they offered different kinds of a prayer for the, on the remains of the former governor of Lagos State, Latif Jakonde, here at his Ilupeju house. And the next thing now is the lying in state, where people will be going around it, and also to offer prayers. Then afterwards, he's going to be buried at uh, the Koyi Bottom Gardens in Koyi. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 is that? Are you still at his um, Ilukweju place? You're not yet at the vaults and garden exactly. place. Exactly. You're still at his Ilukweju no. residence. Presently, I'm at his, I'm at his Ilukweju place. I uh, see. There are friends, clerics, uh, political figures. Yeah. Uh, they've been here. Uh, they hope at prayer. Behind me is his wife of uh, 53 years. Uh, Alhaja Abin Bola, uh, Alhaja Abin Bola Jakonde, and family members were here. They offered prayers uh, for him. And then later, around 4 p.m., he will be taken to Ikoyi Bottom Gardens to be buried. But don't forget that many have described this man as a, as, as a great man. And um, the, the, he founded the modern Lagos that we are still witnessing, uh, looking at uh, his education, what he did in education, his budget of 1979, his budget of of change and no doubt the state witnessed a lot of changes in his tenure. He came up with uh, about 11,500 classrooms in Lagos, and that was when Lagos State was on shift. Lagos schools were, were, were on shift. They do morning and evening, but when he came in, he said he abolished Lagos all that. He, 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 he came up with different yes. classrooms, about 11,500 of them. So, a lot of changes. We still have Jack Holiday houses. So, a lot of people that have benefited from his uh, uh, free education at that time were also here. It was an emotional moment. People were talking about him. He has given them the privilege, I mean, to be learned today. So those were the, those were the uh, accolades pouring in for the late uh, Chief uh, Alaji Latif Jakonde. The Deputy Governor was also here earlier this morning. The Deputy Governor described him as a founder of uh, Lagos. He, 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 let us, he let us see what Lagos, the Lagos that we have today. So it's, it's a big name for him and for the family. They they, they were able to say that uh, they were so happy that their father left a good name behind. And don't forget that in 2017, Yori, I was privileged to interview this man. He told me then that he would like to be remembered for the good works he has done. Indeed. Um, uh, uh, Adidas Yassalam Adini, thank you very much for that sort of overview. I know it's going to be a long day because you're going to be covering every minute of it. So no doubt we'll be in contact with you um, throughout the day. Thank you very much, Adeda Jadini. Please, please. Okay. So, uh, Prof, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, the educational part of it, no doubt, um, you, we were talking off air, and you were telling me that actually when it comes to uh, uh, 
Baba Kikiri, mm -hmm. uh, LKJ, Latif Kawade, Jack Wande, and whatever other, you know, sobriquets you want to give to him. Uh, you, you actually were fortunate to be quite closely placed to him. You said he actually rec re recruited you into the civil service. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, the World Bank in 1975 decided that Nigeria has, and other African countries have been producing enough qualified teachers, that it is high time African countries should start producing managers of the educational system. You don't, there's a difference between teaching and managing. Mm -hmm. So that was why the World Bank introduced educational management at the University of Ibadan in 1975. Incidentally, I was one of the pioneering students Ilori started in 76. Okay. I entered Ilori in 76, and Ilori was then a university college of the University of Ibadan. So uh, by 79, the, we, the first set finished. We graduated. Okay. I left Direct my, entry I, and all yes, of that. Yes, I, I, I left for the NYC in Yola. Something very important to my life, which I must mention, mm was the recruitment, my recruitment into the Lagos State Public Service in 1980 by Alaji Latif Kayo de Jakonde. Okay. He was single-handedly responsible for my recruitment because he, he wanted to start a revolution in the education sector, particularly at the primary and secondary school level. Mm -hmm. So I was the first trained planner to be recruited by the State Public Service. Issue didn't the issue. My classmate at the University of Illinois mm -hmm. came in later, about six months, to join me. We were at the old secretariat then. I must praise Baba for this because he laid, fun, he laid the foundation for my career. He was very close to my late dad, who was a chieftain of the action group in the Kaja Division. Uh, interestingly, my father was behind the denomination of Chief Ulu Ayeni, where you now have the computer village mm -hmm. in Ikeja, Ulu Ayeni Street. That's where you have the computer village now. So he was, he was elected chairman of Ikeja local government from Ikpaja. He was with us in Ikpaja. He lived in Ikpaja then. So that was how I started growing, growing up on Dababa. So when I left the university in 79 and finished my NYC in 80, he asked Chief Akishiku, a level 16 officer, to bring my state public service form to me. I must say this to the whole world to hear. <laughs> in Yola. So, Baba Akishiku brought the form to me, and I mentioned this three, no, four years ago, when Alaji Jakonde was given the highest honor, the highest award, by the Nogusa College of Education when I was the chairman of the governing council. He received the highest award in the history of that institution. I mentioned, but, but I had forgotten. Elijah was even laughing that day. The professor is <laughs> digging, digging out his <laughs> So, so that, that, that did, did you have any notion uh, 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 in those early days, going back to 79, that um, he was going to come and, as it were, you know, revolutionize um, the um, education concept in Lagos? Because you heard Adid Raja Salam talking about it there, and I'm sure you would have had them, perhaps, because you're talking about education planning now. Yes. The, 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 the neighborhood schools, that arguably is one of his, um, uh, shall we say, one of the more notable of his legacies, mm. uh, multiplying the schools, both from primary, secondary, even tertiary, and making them free, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Adid Raja's description of Baba to me, I will call it an understatement. Mm. To me, Alaji Latif Kao de Jakonde is a political phenomenon. That, those are the words I will use for him. It's beyond... A phenomenon. It's a political phenomenon. Well, that, when, you, when you say that, especially as he was seen in the public eye to be quite close to the late sage, uh, the late chief of Bafemi Awolowo, so much so that his 
other nickname, Baba Kekere, yes. derives from mm -hmm. Awolowo standing yes. as uh, Baba. Baba, so, Baba. Baba Baba. So when you talk about uh, him being a political uh, ph phenomenon, yes. he, he, he was seen in that light probably by uh, the late sage himself? Of course. If you look at his political midwifery, the way he grew, being a serious apostle and loyalist, of Shifaba Femi Awolo. Okay. Then, mm. you will agree with me that he was about the most dedicated, the most politically dedicated leader after Shifa Awolo. And that was why, when I wrote my PhD thesis uh, in 87, I dedicated it to Shifa Bafem I've, 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 I've graded every, all my leaders mm -hmm. based on their humongous contributions. So after Baba, it's Steve Jacundi. What was the political vision going back to his work before he retired? Um, uh, of course, we knew the, the vision of yes. um, a, you know, ACN and then later on there are, there, there are huge chunks of that in APC. Um, but this, this service and upliftment of the people, w w was that the core of it even, even back then, this selfless service kind of a thing? You see, we, we, we cannot finish our chronicle of Elijah Jack on this achievement in the next one month. Not to talk of today. I say this because he, 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 he took a bold decision immediately after his election that we have to stop the shift system at the primary and secondary school level in Lagos. That was when I came in. Okay. Before then, we were having shift system. Some people would come in the morning, some would come in the afternoon. Yes. It, 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 it requires uncommon courage for a leader to overcome that problem. At a point, people were trying to say the, the, the reform was uh, more of a chicken sh shed. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> there were some very good derogatory <laughs> remarks. Well, you yes. See, I, yes, I, I, because I was on the spot. Yes. You see, what is important is for the end to justify the means. Okay. That's my training. <laughs> as long as the end justifies the means, I don't care. So even though they might have been, um, they, 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 they weren't quite the developed classrooms that you would expect in a modern era. Yes. But apparently, going by what you've just said about the end justifying the means, yes. um, it, it, there were so many people that had to be taken care of ed, in terms of education in Lagos State that he just couldn't sit down there twiddling his thumbs. And even if it no. wasn't going to be perfect, no. something had to be done. And this is where the courage came in. Yes. That it might not have been the fullest capability of, 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 of the state at the time, mm -hmm. but we're going to have to start. That you thought was uh, courageous? Highly. And uh, to, 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 to really substantiate, Dr. Laole Idris, a doctorate degree holder in law, was then my commissioner for education. As a level nine officer when I came in in eighty. I have no uh, resting period. As soon as my commissioner comes in the morning, hey, wait for me. We are going out, myself and the commissioner. We will have to go and see how many of those new buildings are under high tension wire and what to do to remediate the problem. That was why I said I had no 
rest in peace. Talk, Monday to Friday. Talking about the resting period, there are those who said that in, at, at, at his prime, mm. um, Alaji Jakonde was something of a workaholic. More than a workaholic. You know. At the implementation committee for the establishment of the Lagos State University, Oga was the che pioneer, uh, original chairman of the implementation committee. We will start meeting at 10 o'clock. And we rise at eight in dinner in the evening. You, if if Baba did not go out, how will you say you are going out, Yori? Baba will not leave that seat from ten in the morning to eight in the evening. Baba will come with his food, which is yam. <laughs> the, the, the yam. That's one thing I have learned from Baba. I told my wife about a week ago that I'm going to follow that pattern of his lifestyle now. He will eat the, his yam, no egg, no soup, nothing. Really? Yes. This is something of an expose. I am. Just a slice of, a couple of slices yes, of yam. Yes. Uh, Bearful like that. Yes. <laughs> Boiled yam. Yes. Mm. I see. And then he would drink water. And was ready to go. Yes. <laughs> I told you. Meanwhile, you, you, you guys probably had to take time off for, for lunch break or for that break. Go and come that, back. That is one thing I have learned from Baba that I told my wife two weeks ago I'm going to start operating now. <laughs> That you, that particular <laughs> jacket. <laughs> Would you well, say that? We, we, uh, apparently, he admired his chief. Uh, talking about Chief Abafemi Awolowo. Yes. And um, worked very, very closely with him, uh, and and so implemented most of the most of the um, ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, he was part of a set. Uh, in that set, I think was also. Um, uh, the later uh, Bolaige, mm -hmm. uh, Ambrose Ali, Ali. Mm -hmm. and I, I forget the other, you know, the, that, that was the set. They were really um, extolling and practicing the, um, uh, the values of um, uh, ACN, yes. the Action Congress of Nigeria. Yes. Now, this, are you satisfied with the rate at which it has been built upon today? Because everybody's Lagos is center of excellence today. Yes. Uh, probably in, in no small measure to those beginnings. Um, I think uh, I would, I have described, I call, I, I call Baba my Oga, Oga Lang, we, like, we call him Oga. Everybody used to call him Oga at the time. I have described him today the way I, I want to, it's a political phenomenon. Yes. There's no doubt about that. And is the architect of Lagos State. Talking about a political, a political phenomenon. Yes. Do, do you was there? This is quite delicate now. Um, Alaji Latif Kadi Jakonde elected to serve in the Abacha regime. Yeah. Um, for a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially those among his admirers. Uh, it, 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 he stepped into stormy weather at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Mm. Oh, as, a, I, 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 as a socialist, people would not expect Oga to serve under Abasha. But as somebody who is committed to showcasing his worth. That's the angle I'm, going to, I'm looking at it now. Mm -hmm. He's a hard working, you, you refer to him as a workaholic. Mm. Mm. Oh, guy is so, is, so, is so dedicated to whatever passion he has for anything in life. Okay. So he's going to serve under a bachelor. I look at it from two angles. The first, those who are against it going there, said so because of his social, socialist bent. But he was looking at it from the angle of his own contribution to the regime there. Whether 
he was right or wrong, mm -hmm. if to another day. It's left for history to, 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 <laughs> to determine. <laughs> you know. <It's> another day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, as we are speaking, uh, proceedings for, you know, towards the internment of um, the late uh, Alaji Latif Kawade Jakonde, who passed on yesterday at 91, uh, are going on. And um, so we are in studio here. We shall also be opening up the phones. Um, we also will see how much we can do remotely. Uh, there are other people that we intend to connect up with. And, um, but as I said, we'll open up the phones because um, such was the nature of the man, Alaji Latif, Lakaade, Jakonde. Just about everybody knew him. Baba Kekere as yes. a name just goes mm -hmm. to show you. Uh, and the political legacy. And um, he's just been referred to by uh, Professor Tunde Samuel, who he actually recruited into the civil service as a uh, legal that you just heard. Um, it's just been described as a political uh, phenomenon. And um, Prof doesn't use those um, kind of expressions like him. <laughs> because uh, there still are other political phenomenons, uh, I'm sure, if I were to press prof, prof about it. But these are going back to, you know, uh, the building bricks of, the, mm -hmm. of, of, of Aulawa's idea that I think was continued by the ACNs and... Uh, uh, now APC, but there were also many other groups, really, before they began to uh, uh, splinter off. Now, let's go back to his legacy, and uh, I want to lean a bit on, on the political phenomenon uh, uh, part of it. Um, tell me a bit more about that, let, let, because many people don't understand it. Uh, he's been out of office, so there are many adults, many young adults, that probably can't relate to the man, Alaji Latif. Kayode, Jack Hunde, uh, as a political uh, icon that you described him as, how did he stand out? Mm. How was it different from the others? Because they were, that was the time of rich expressions. We heard about political of, uh, 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 what, what, what was Wazir Ibrahim? Uh, he was against political with, with, politics without bitterness, bitterness. I remember now. Mm. Uh, what would you say LKJ himself stood for? Mm. I have told you earlier than that. For the next one year, we will There are so many, yeah. Let me start with his policy of social engineering. OK. I, stay, I, I say this with utmost humility. That Alaji Latif Jackson they made it possible for thousands of Lagos State Public Service workers mm -hmm. to become landlord today. Okay. That is one achievement of Oga that I will never forget. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that. Just about every last nearly Lagos State public service worker yes. is a landlord. Yes. In choice places of Lagos. <laughs> that's That's one of his monumental achievements. Majority of these workers will forever remember him. That why not for Alaji Jakonde, they will still remain tenants. Yes, yes. And I think that notion continues in Lagos till the present day. That, that was why I refer to him as the architect of Lagos State. I don't see people came after him to build upon the foundation he laid. Yes. So, number two. Uh, one moment, sir. Let me just quickly take in a call that's come on. Okay. Uh, come in. Uh, good morning, Mazi Okoroafo in Arochuku. Uh, we just lost Mazi Okoroafo in Arochuku, but the lines are open now. Uh, do call in if you wish and you, you know. Uh -huh. So, if you move away from the housing policy. Yes. Which was part of his social engineering. You move on to education. We were able to multiply enrollment phenomenally between 79 and 2000, uh, 79 and 83, first four years. He was able to solve the problem because without enough infrastructure 
he will not be able to objectify policy outcomes. Okay. He wanted a room to jack up. You cannot jack up a room when infrastructure remains K constant. It's not possible. So he, I was I was I, I I can't I can't remember how that idea came up for him that in 79. Okay. That's at the primary and secondary school level. Mm -hmm. At the tertiary level, he remains the founding father, though he's gone, but forever. Mm -hmm. We will continue to refer to him as the founding father of tertiary education in Lagos State. And that was with the... Lagos State Polytechnic, I didn't go to the College of Education, Lagos State University. Because North Olympia, where I pioneered as provost, started late. It was not part of the first three. Lassu, Puli. In fact, I didn't know I started as an advanced teacher's college. So, he came up with the establishment of Lasso because he wanted Lasso to be at the apex of the tertiary orbit there until now. He was the pioneer, pioneer chairman of the implementation committee. Mumita Tojo. In fact, uh, one another mighty achievement of Elijah Kondi, in particular reference to Lasso, was that he, he, he lived and died as a, a schema of substance, means and substance. He was a schema mm. of means and substance. I'll give you an example. Okay. The Ojo campus belonged to the Methodist Church of Nigeria. Methodist Boys High School was to come down to Ojo. He negotiated another side for them in Lagos Island, as well as a business spot for the metal resource at Broad Street. He asked me to collect the key for the Ojo campus after signing the agreement. So we had to move to Ojo. Last Ojo was originally Methodist Boys High School. I see, I see. That's what I told you, it's a, it's a schema of means and substance. <laughs> when he wants something, he will go for it. You, you've also said that he was, um, he pioneered almost like the, the cadre of um, education it, managers. Yes. Who, that is following, uh, did you say it was the World Bank that had brought The World it? Bank decided that most African countries must start training managers of the educational system. Yes. There's difference between teaching and managing. I, 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 and, and that's where you come in. You came in as a yes, manager. Yes, I came you know, in. As a young, I, as a fresh graduate. I, I was one of the first set. Okay. I, I'm, I'm being told that someone else is on the line. Did, did I get that right? Someone else? Hello, Gideon. Good morning. For, uh, thank you for calling in. Gideon. Good morning. Good morning, Chiliore. <laughs> thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, I do appreciate your program, especially on this issue of uh, El Alaji Latif, Karadi Jokani. He's a great man. He's a phenomenon. Yeah. Because when you talk of the Chronicles, we will keep on repeating for one month, it's too short. <laughs> for a whole year, <laughs> for generations to come. Yes. Because when you see a human being that considers education, consider health, consider uh, accommodation, mm -hmm. transport, these are the essential, the basic things for human beings to thrive on. And if an individual can do this, and he has gone. I think we should keep on saying that 
may God be with him, wherever he is, and may God be with his family. Amen. Let the negotiations, let the governors, let the people who are in government now, let the civil servants, let um. Oh, oh, but thank you very much uh, for calling in. We, 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 got, the, we, we got your drift. And um, I, I, I remember where we were, but I've got to go on a quick break now. Uh, stay with us, please. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. And um, it's the day after the news broke of the passing of Alaji Latif Karode Jakonde, uh, former governor of uh, Lagos State. And indeed, he's been referred to as um, a, a, a political... What was the word, Prof? Uh, a, a political phenomenon, um, very, very close associate of um, the late sage Obafemi Awolowo, and so much so that he was called Baba Kekere, um, as, you know, juxtaposing that with Babagba, Awolowo being Babagba, so close <laughs> to the man in ideas. Uh, was in a prof, you were telling me, we were talking about the education aspect of um, Jack uh, mm -hmm. legacy, and you, was, you had said that in your time, just as you were coming, um, coming in as a young graduate, had been recruited, your interest and your focus uh, was a newfangled um, uh, World uh, Bank idea yeah. about education managers. We have enough teachers. We yes. now need education managers. Yes. Uh, w has this continued a pace in Lagos State? Does Lagos State now have a surfeit of education managers? I, I, I will not uh, stick out my neck fully. You won't go that far. Fully. Uh, however, you see, because I, I, if, if I say that, uh, because uh, in order to truly objectify that po policy, mm. last two had a Department of Education and Management okay. to follow suit with Ibadan. Ife, Unsuka, Ilori, Amadubelo. Maybe Benin himself. Benin, yes. Mm -hmm. Um But the snag there is that government is not allowing those trends in education and management. Just like Baba did when I came in. Mm -hmm. Government is not doing that. Because this, the, this notion, there's this notion among teachers that there's nothing special about managing. Okay, okay, a newfangled notion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I get you. Now, let me cross over to, um, we, we also have, um, you know. And uh, uh, before, we, Yori, I'm sorry, e, e, before yes. you go further. Yes. With respect to Lasso, because I mentioned earlier on that Baba is a fantastic schema. When Lasso was established on, under the leadership of Baba, Baba dispersed faculties to all the divisions of Lagos State. Baba did not allow us to over-concentrate the university in a division. He asked me to get a site for the Faculty of Medicine at Ogombo. Faculty of Medicine, Lagos State University was slated originally for Ogombo in the Lagos Island. Ogombo. Ogombo, yes. Wow. Faculty of Engineering was to go to Alagbado to uh, Government College, Agege. As you said. Yes. A schema, a planner. He, he, he dispersed the faculties to all the major divisions of Lagos State. That, that's, that's why I say Baba is exceptional. Okay. Let, let, let us now, you know, uh, link up with um, Chief Ayo Padokun. You know, although he always objects, he says he's Mr. Ayo Padokun. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Chief Ayo Padokun <laughs> on Skype. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Yori. <laughs> I still object. <laughs> I'm, I'm, chief, I'm chief in nobody. I'm an ordinary ayo <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Sir. We're talking about um, to, 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 to take the words out of Professor's mouth, a political phenomenon, uh, Latif Kayode, Jack Hunde, 
Um, is, is that, you know, right about the way you see it as well? Uh, because you've worked with and you've known uh, most progressive politicians of note in the country. Uh, well, my relationship with uh, like that can be really uh, could really be said to be all encompassing. Okay. Yes, I was not just uh, a casual observer of a friend. While he was governor of Lagos, I was assistant director of organization of his own political party, the Unity Party of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was his I was his point man at the National Secretariat. So I knew a lot Jack and Day very well, privately and publicly. So we're not over saying the things that have been said about um, the man as a political phenomenon. Well, that was that 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 was true, but the, the people are concentrating on the part they knew, eh? and yeah. they can only they could, they could only do that. Yeah, what you say is consistent with the amount of information that is available mm -hmm. uh, 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 to, to you. Mm -hmm. tell, tell, tell us, tell, a, Mr. Yokwadoku, tell us about the yes. Japan Day you knew. Yeah. Okay. When he started up early in the, early in the day, as he was leaving the Lisa Grammar School and he ventured into journalism, it did not take him long time to create a niche for himself. As a serious-minded commentator on national affairs, and it was because of what he did at the daily service, that endeared him to Chief Obafemi Awolo, who then invited him into the African newspaper uh, uh, Limited, the publishers of the Nigeria Tribune. And within the next four or five years, he had become the editor in chief and later became the managing director of the entire conglomerate. I can tell you here, without any fear of any contradiction because I myself I paid my dues as a reporter, as a journalist. Jakande was one of the best editorial opinion writers Nigeria had ever produced. Same date, and I've not seen his compass. Here was a man who would dictate editorial of air and it will be suitable to the, pay, the, the column already marked for editorial comments. And he did that for almost about 24 years without fail. So he was such a distinguished professional. Indeed. I, I, I now, think... look at him. Look at, look at what, what he can his professionalism with. He was the chief promoter of the newspaper proprietors organization. The advertising league of the of the of the, of the newspapers, NPAL. He was the founding and motivator for his establishment. And because of his interest in the development of professionalism in journalism. He was the chief promoter, the initiator of the establishment of Nigeria Institute of Journalism in Ikeja. And I can tell you that Alad Dakande was one of the earliest uh, icon of journalism admitted into the board of the International Press Institute, IMPI. What does the youth want from a, a person? Indeed. Uh, it's the only created a, 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 a base for what I'm about to say. Jakande was able to perform as a professional in politics 
because he had a second address. Indeed. I, I, had I, get the import, I get the import of that. He, he, I get that's the that's import that's of that and the, the quality of the man. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayokwadoku, uh, for, for bringing in um, uh, that side of the man uh, before he came into another aspect of service, which was when, as a politician, encouraged by Chief Abafemi Aolawo, he ran for election in 79 and indeed uh, made it. As you've uh, rightly pointed out, when you talk about education in, I mean, I beg your pardon, when you talk about um, um, journalism in Nigeria, you, you said it so, so beautifully. Um, so that, 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 that is a valuable thing to know that. That was how he was also a professional in politics. Uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that you have been hearing about Yori. from. Yori. Yes, sir. Yori, Aladdin uh, Dakar never imagined himself to be a professional politician. He did not submit himself to that at all. He had to like, have his job. He had to have the work he was, he was doing. He was, he, he was committed. Eh? He, like, that's I said, he was, a, he was a professional in politics. <laughs> and that was what he lived. I think he used to write uh, under the byline of John West, which was the name of his company yes, when he left public service. Yeah, well, well, yes, when he left the, the, the African newspapers, then he set up the, the, the John West at uh, Kenya there. Yeah. Uh, now, look, when you see about education, most Nigerians won't, won't know this. Only a few of us who are part of what, what he was doing could tell you the story of the transformation of the three or four system that he made yes. under the military into one. Mm -hmm. He set up an, an implementation committee under Dr. Idoushobo Ali, now Professor Idoushobo Ali, to do a configuration of bringing everything now into one stream. And that committee was, was in place for, all, for almost nine months at Birel Avenue here in Yaba with one Mr. Biodu of the uh, Ministry of Education of late. as his secretary. Yeah. And, yeah. and they did all the work wherever it was possible for us to assist him from the Secretariat of the UPN, eh? we were doing. And he succeeded in doing what people regarded as impossible. And there was a 350% Increase of enrollment of, of pupils into primary mm -hmm. and into secondary school. Exactly. And yet, and yet, education was free for all intent and purposes. Indeed. One moment, sir, yeah? Be because I, I, I be, we got a call back from um, Mazi Okorafo, who tried it initially and didn't uh, quite get in. Good morning, Mazi. Thank you for holding on. Do I have you now, Mazi Okorafo? Oh dear. Um, I'm so sorry about that, but this will be the second time that mm. Mazi has tried to get in. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know. <laughs> is, is that who's who's on the line now? Is it Mazi Okorafo? Yeah, it's Mazi Okorafo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, professor. Okay. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Go on, please. The three basic essential of life. Which Nigerians are so glamorous for today, Arad Gakande bears with his credit. Now look at the issue of housing. At least we have Gakande estate today in Lagos. Now you ask yourself, the present generation in terms of administration, as they embark on the legacy, you are able to see that many Nigerians will not dare to do that. Because the government of the country wants to do it in house. If the government of President Day, and following a list from the party that like Alad Jackande, all these sort of housing program like mm. that they will not face it. Mm -hmm. These people, people glamorous. Now, that is why I used to say that it is good for a human being while you are alive. This is a good legacy. So that people will still be talking. Whether a few hundred, hundred million years of 20th century to come, Jackande says is there. You know, like people are coming, generation are coming. It, it is history. Because it is not good for a human being to be in this world. When you go, your yeah, history is good. It's not. What we need is a good sound history and look at the education. See what is happening in our Nigerian educational sector. You ask yourself, a lot of second day does it. Look at the foundation they laid that time. Now you ask yourself, how many new generation governors have already borrowed resources? It's not, they are not there. 
Anybody just wants to jump up, 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 Ask me as that are you a professor today? What does it take the present generation today? <laughs> Learn how economic can to so give all this free education to people. Look, make you so rest with this. I call as the present generation governors, honorable members, to follow a leaf. At least if you don't give anything to people, give them sound and qualitative education, which is one of the dividends of democracy. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um Mazio Korofa, and I'm so happy that you could finally get in, you know, to, to, to have your say there. Uh, uh, Prof, we, uh, we still have um, uh, Mr. Ayo Okwadoku on, on, on the line. Uh, uh, but Prof, the, the point he made in there, it, it just sort of jumped my memory a bit. Yeah, he actually, like he, uh, Jakonde, uh, he started out as a writer, as a journalist, mm. um, uh, very, very briefly, you know, passed through King's College. Uh, but he started out as a writer, and I, you know, and got a reputation, you know, for, for doing fine work. Now, we've just been told by Mr. Ayopado Kun that the whole concept of going into politics and, and that just being it was not part of his own makeup. He had to be a professional uh, in, in politics. That, again, strikes you as the man that you know. Hmm. I have said it on set here. Times without number referring to myself as a professional in politics, not a professional politician. Yes. I, I'm not a professional politician. Mm, mm. So because uh, there are so, some untidy things that you must learn if you want to become a professional politician. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I get you. But let me use the time to bring in Mr. George. Good morning, Mr. George. Thank you for calling in. Uh, good morning, Uncle Yuri, and good morning, Mr. Professor. Good morning. Uncle Yuri, I would like to look at... We also have Mr. Ayopado on the line as well, uh, Mr. George. Okay, my greetings to the comrades. Yes. Um, uh, Uncle Yuri, I would like to look at this issue from the personal life angle of LPJ. Okay. He is the only governor that I can recollect in this country that decided to live in his own house while in office and to be using his, his personal car. The personal car, he was using his personal car. At that mm. time, we had uh, official cars, but he chose to be using his personal car. After retirement, he still continues to live in his own house. I don't know why that is not being practiced today. Today, we have what they call constitution, I mean, uh, constituency allowance, mm -hmm. New, newspaper allowance, cowboy allowance. This man exhibited sincerity of purpose in service. It is not enough to be praising him. There is need for us all to emulate. Indeed. When, when somebody does something as a page setter, it is not because of praises. For, for most heroes, it is not because of praises. It is so for the benefit of people and for other people to learn from it, for the betterment of the whole. Let us look at it from that angle. Indeed. This man showed that to be in government is not for money making. Thank you very and much, Mr. George, for calling in. Appreciate your call. And let me take that point to, uh, back to Mr. Ayopadoku. Um, yeah, we're reminded of now the, the famous um, Toyota crown of Alaji, Alaji <laughs> Jakonde. He, he, he just very much stayed the way he was as a private citizen when he became uh, a public official. Uh, and the point that has just been made by that caller, Mr. George, that um, he stayed in his own house right through. And I, I think of recent, I've heard, uh, I've seen some newspaper publications that the whole controversial, vexatious legal state policy of, um, you, you know, retired governors having houses all over the place, the, the point has come out that People like uh, Babatunde Raji Fashola, people like Alaji Latif Jakonde are not beneficiaries of that kind of a thing. Now, going back to the point about he lived in his own house and drove his own car, what does that say to you about, uh, about the man? Well, people of his generation and who belong to the party 
on which platform he contested were of that similar character characteristics. There is none of the UPN governors that can that could have told you that he spent ten thousand naira of his own personal money to become governor in nineteen seventy nine. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. That that was the truth of the matter. And I, I have said it several while they were alive. None of them could say I spent ten thousand naira of my money to become governor. And so they were people's choice and they dedicated themselves for the service of the ordinary man. Okay. Not to ingratiate themselves, not to enrich themselves in any way. Let me give you one interesting thing that had been forgotten. Every fortnight, while Jack Andy was governor of Lagos State, he would go to the party secretariat in motion from 9 o'clock to sometimes about 7, 8 in the evening. And anybody, any Lagosian, any Resident in Lagos who wanted to see the governor was capable of saying it. It's, it was first come, first serve. You'll be given a tally as soon as you reach there in the party secretariat. And he would take along some of his closest aides so that they would take notes and then they'll be able to deal with matters of public concern. Yeah. So it was a it was it was for the people. Now, when Liale People were, uh, it was pro programming as to what would happen to the product of the second education he was putting together. And it was clear that uh, vacancies were not so much available to take in into the university in the, other, in the other part of the country. So the idea of university, the establishment of University of Lagos came to mind and he, he consulted and he, he put up a committee that were people that with people like Professor Abisogun Lee, Doctor Idosho Okay, you, you mean Lagos State yeah. University? Yes. It's not not you, you a slip of tongue. You said University of Lagos. No, no, Lagos State University. I yeah. you mean, sorry, Lagos State University. Last week, eh? So, he, Professor Abisogun Lee, who later became a, a vice chancellor, mm. eh? In the place, mm. Doctor Idosho Bwale later became a dean mm -hmm. of the School of, of, of Communication, yeah. Eh? Uh, the, uh, Dr. Noah eh? and, 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 and a few others were packed together for the establishment of that university. You, you know, I, 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 want to, I have to interrupt you here. I, I don't like myself for doing so, but we completely run out of time. And I do need to thank you for, for, for coming on and speaking about a man, as you've just told us, that you were quite close to, um, even before he became the public figure uh, that he was, when he was... Um, just a faithful, you know, uh, servant of his um, ideas and those of his principle. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayo Opadoku, you know, for coming on. So, uh, Prof, it's, 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 uh, people are going to be sad. It doesn't matter when you go, but mm. people will be understanding, mm. but mm. they'll be sad. But uh, this is a, a legacy that any man can feel uh, proud if, if people were to be talking about him. And as some viewers have said, this is a, a proud legacy that mm. he has left. It is. Indeed. Uh, you're probably happy to have um, worked with him, to have known him. And you actually have explained how there, there are aspects of it where you owe where you are today yeah. uh, to, to the man, LKJ. Thank you very much for also coming on the program. Prof. It's my pleasure being we, here. We appreciate it. Okay, then. So um, that's our program today. Um, I was going to say please join us tomorrow, but that's a Saturday. You know we don't do Saturday, so it'll have to be uh, Monday. But in the meantime... Please do all you can to be anti-COVID-19 compliant. You know, the masks, the proper distancing, social distancing, I call it. And try not to be in the midst of crowds as much as possible if you don't need to be there. Um, so that's my, my, my rant for today. <laughs> do have a great weekend. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.